Well, this is take two because I made an entire video and if you guys know, you know that I am not big on writing a script unless I'm doing a voiceover video. So needless to say, I'm pretty ticked off because I had some really good points on the last attempt and then this machine decided she was not going to record that particular video. So let's try this again, shall we? Hi, my name is Roxana. This is Metamorphosis Rox and today we're going to have a little chat about high testosterone levels. I decided I wanted to give you the perspective from someone that has high testosterone levels and has gone through life not as a sports figure but as a regular human being and what that has meant to me personally. When I was a teenager, I had two things against me. I had a mustache, which I used to, back in those days, you had this kid that you would like make it blonde because ironically, the hair in my arms was blonde but the hair on my face was not. But also, there was a line from my belly button down that was hair that was very dark. The rest of the hair on my entire body was blonde, but that hair was kind of dark for me, you know, because I'm very pale. And I'm big on bikinis. I've never really liked one-piece suits. I think I've had one-piece suit my entire life that I freaking loved. Other than that, I've always had two-piece suits. And I was very self-conscious about the fact that I had this dark line of hair. So it, when it came to the point, I would just grab like really flimsy t-shirts, put them over my bikini so that when they get wet, you could see the bikini, but you didn't see the line. And that also led to a lot of bullying because, of course, people say, well, what, what, why don't you shave your face? And, and it's really annoying, by the way. Later on in life, when I started this YouTube channel, I had some women who claimed to be feminists and pro-women and all this other stuff. And as usual, the hypocrisy is big because they're big on being pro-women until they don't like the woman and then they bash her. And those people always brought up the hair on my chin and the hair on my face and how I was ugly and all this other stuff. And it used to bother me then. It doesn't bother me now for reasons that I might get into later. I got into it on the other video, but unfortunately that one disappeared. Anyway, the reason why I'm bringing all of this up is because one of the things that I noticed about this Imani Khalif situation was how people called it an unfair event. If she is a woman, it's an unfair advantage to have high testosterone levels. And I started thinking to myself, let me get this straight. It's an unfair advantage for her. Now, I'm going to show you a virtual gallery, which I advise if you want. You can pause to read all of it. But there is one person by the name of Broadhurst, I believe is how you say her name. And this person was asked to give their opinion about the situation because they beat Imani Khalif in 2022. In fact, they're one of nine people that have beat Khalif in her 42 fight trajectory. So you mean to tell me that it's an unfair advantage, but she's lost boxing fights. How is that a, a, an advantage again? Now, mind you, I'm also reminded by the fact that when Michael Phelps was winning all those gold medals, we all marveled at his physique and how his long arms and his height were definitely contributing to his wins. But everybody saw that as a, as a good thing. Nobody saw it as an unfair advantage. But Imani, uh, Imani Khalif, who is not white, who is not your average beauty, she gets bashed for it. She gets called a man. As someone who has lived their entire life with that issue and, you know, having to keep my hair a little long because if I cut it short, people think that I look like a man and all this other stuff. I just want you to be aware of how you say things and what you say and more importantly how much you pay attention to the sources that you have because it took me all five minutes to find images of her as a five-year-old or six-year-old and she definitely looks like a girl. I also found images that claim to be her. I couldn't verify them but claim to be her 
you know, with her makeup, relaxed, not fighting, not boxing. And she definitely looks like a girl. But more importantly, even when she's boxing and she has her hair in her braids or she has short hair, I've seen pictures of her smiling. If you still think that's a boy, uh, you have a problem. She, she lights up the room with that smile. Plus, you know, I'm I'm partial to dimples, so if she has dimples, so that might be why I think she she lights up the room. But she's a n nice looking girl. The thing about boxing is that we want our boxers to all look manly, even the girls. We want them to all look a certain way. But when they do, we call them men. And the biggest critic we all know is J.K. Rowling which ironically has been called a man by the Twitter mafia. So I just don't understand where you people get off calling a sports figure who is a woman, a man, just so you can score points with your personal agenda against trans people. Because that's what this is all about. The Olympics in France have been condemned from the moment they started with the beheaded Marie Antoinette that was called satanic by you know who then we had the famous scene of the meeting of the trans of the trans of the drag queens in a stage and oh my god they're defiling the the, the Christian the last supper and blah 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 uh, said by people who are calling a particular politician the second coming of Jesus Christ but that's not defiling the, the religion, really. You know, the hypocrisy is everywhere. And that's something that has been painfully obvious during this episode. And I know Imani Khalif is not going to watch this video and has no idea who I am. But I hope she knows that at least in Florida, she has a fan who really wants her to succeed. And really hopes that she knows that there's a lot more of us who believe in her and who want her to succeed and to beat every opponent she has and to not let this get to her. And to the people of Algeria, which I know they're not gonna watch this, but to the people of Algeria, do not let this rumor and innuendo stop you or start a an argument or get her hurt in any way because some idiot thinks she's a man because she's not. Now I'm going to leave you with a virtual gallery of all the comments and the some of the theories that have come out about why this is happening, including an, uh, a country's <clears throat> boxing association starting this entire rumor because they don't like losing, but we already know who those people are. Uh, what I would ask from you is the next time you see something on social media, Go and look at resources, do your research, and stop just repeating things just based on what somebody else said, just because you are maybe transphobic and you think it's okay to be transphobic. By the way, it isn't. Just, you can't expose your point of view. You can debate your point of view without hurting people, including trans people. At the end of the day, we're hurting a lot of people that don't need to be part of the conversation just because you made them into part of the conversation. Imani Khalif is a female boxer. She's not a trans female. She's a female boxer. Much like I am a female, have always been female, have never had body dysmorphia because of my sex. I've had it for my weight, but not for my sex. So can we please stop with this ridiculousness? Because it's just as bad if you misgender Khalif as if you misgender J.K. Rowling. And we all know I don't like her anymore. So if I'm saying it's wrong, it's because I refuse to be a hypocrite just when one side says it and the other one doesn't. Thank you very much for watching. And stay tuned for the virtual gallery that is about to start. Have a nice day.